Okay, so as I continue to just check in with the news reports of the day and do a fairly careful sweep of that which I think is manufactured lies to keep people busy that doesn't interest me versus what I think is the true important gems of what plays into doing what the Lord said, which is to be awake. In Luke 21, he presents a case that we need to be awake and aware. We have a lot of things that are happening that uh, we can see from, from the standpoint of a convergence of signs, right? All of these end time signs are all in play right now, which makes it a really important time to pay attention day by day and to anticipate the coming of the Lord. And so for the sons of God, not for the sons of Adam who chose to uh, not get reborn. They're slaves. They're going to be staying here for a seven-year period, Daniel's 70th week. But for those who have become sons of God through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and their repentance, we are watching our Lord through these amazing Jewish holy days and he fulfills each one of them. And I did a video previously talking about that. But I just want to touch on this really quick here because um, what, what we're watching here for is when Revelation 12 comes. And, and so we every single year we go through the cycle of all the four seasons and the autumn seasons are a high watch point where people should really be paying attention because that's where you have your last three Feast that the Lord is going to fulfill to the day on each one. And so he correlates these feasts with his calendar. Now, not the paper calendars that are static with the calendar that he's created in the sun, the moon, and the stars, which is talked about there, uh, the Moed in Genesis 1, I believe it's 14. And so we saw the Lord come as the lamb. We talked about this before. And he fulfilled the gospel in and through the feasts. Uh, he, in this drawing, they just um, combine them. I'm sorry, it might be a little bit hard to see. But um, it's, uh, it's Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits. So that's your death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. And then 50 days later, Pentecost and his church was conceived. The Holy Spirit was put down into the 120. And so for all these thousands of years, we have been in what is called the church age. So you probably already know that. Well, so just like the Lord fulfilled those four feast days to the exact day, and it's, it's, it is a science. It is a science. It is a mathematical thing here that the Lord uses. He helps us to understand that he is coming and he will fulfill it on a feast of trumpets on a feast of trumpet, which is also called Rosh Hashanah. But it has lots of names. Yom Teruah is another name, um, and that is about returning and repentance to the Lord. Uh, Shuba, returning, repentance is Teruah. And um, there is this whole calendar that goes along with that. And so I've been talking about that in a previous video I did where we're looking at these trade wars. We're looking about the setting of the seals. We're looking at potentially if this is the year the Lord uh, is going to come and fulfill things. And so I'm a very hardcore believer that each day, as it says in second, uh, I believe it's second Peter uh, chapter three, he talks about one day equals 1000 years. And I'm very into a six day, 6,000 year, not, not talking about the seventh day yet, uh, calendar. And so uh, that last seven years of that 6,000, and every day is a day closer to that, he's going to have to come on year 5,993, right? And then that last seven years, he will finish that tribulation, and then he'll fulfill the day of atonement. And then there's going to be a little bit of cleanup. <laughs> I'm putting it mildly. And then he will bring forth this thousand years of his tabernacles, this thousand year reign that Psalm 2, his father promised him. Here, so that's the last three feasts. So we talked about that. Well, it's it's even more interesting because this is where the Jews teach that the Meshua is coming. And if you don't know about their calendar, it's really, 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 really interesting. 
Hold on just a second. Let me get to where I want to go here for you. So their calendar is different, and it is predicated on the planets going through the uh, constellations, and there can be a little bit of variance with that year to year for one reason or another. And so just to let you know where we are right now in space and time, we're actually in the Hebrews calendar in the month of what's called Av, right here, Av. And September 1st is going to be this next coming month of Elul. Now, there is a lot to be said about Elul. Elul is really exciting because um, the very next month, and we'll, we'll talk about Elul here in a minute, but in the very next month is this one right here, the seven. You see the seven? Uh, most people know that God has a thing for numbers, and seven is his number, okay? And so this month right here, Tishri, the very first day of Tishri is like their New Year's, but it's not just New Year's. It's packed full of a bunch of important information. And when you read the Revelation 12 sign where Abraham was promised all the way back in Genesis 12 and then um, it's peppered all throughout Genesis. In fact, I was just rereading Genesis today. Uh, he has promised to become the father of many nations and Sarah, the mother of many nations. And it's not just talking about a physical Israel, but it's talking about a supernatural one new mankind in Christ who will be like the celestial stars. And so he talks about these spiritual bodies. These sons of God will have these spiritual bodies in first Corinthians 15 that will be like his body. Uh, where he was able to disappear and reappear and all that kind of thing. So it's really exciting when you get to Tishri 1 because one of these, Tishri 1, which happens to be September 30th, not just on the paper calendars, but when you look in Stellarium, you will see that that is when the Earth, with our moon that goes around our Earth, is at the feet of Virgo, the Virgin, and also New Jerusalem, our mother from Galatians 4, she gives birth to the glorifying of these sons of God. Okay. And so that occurs on that date. And so the question is always what year? I don't know. But right now we're in the convergence of all signs. And you have a lot of things that I've tried to talk about in a lot of different videos to kind of let you know that it appears it could possibly be this year because of a buildup of things in preparation for the seals and these things coming and the sons of God leaving in the ark, which is Jesus, not an actual boat, but Jesus, these abstract concepts. Uh, it could possibly be this September 30th here on Tishri 1. And I told you there's lots of names for it, but um, one of the names is uh, Yom Teruah, we talked about, and Yom means day, and Teruah means repentance. And uh, that is a, a very important day because God says that people need to be saved before Yom Teruah, particularly when he is going to come and fulfill his Revelation 12, 5 promise to Abraham and Sarah and to all believers who are connected to Christ, the one new mankind, where we get glorified, we get our new bodies, and we get our eternal life. We're born because we get this new flesh, okay? And he fulfills things on feast days. So there's this whole thing about Elul that is really exciting because Elul is the month that, it's over here, it's the sixth month, and it precedes the seventh month, okay? So we're going to talk about that. This year is unique because right now your president is getting ready to use these supposed shootings, which are probably all contrived to elicit a response, problem, reaction, their solution. And he's talking about classifying people with mental illness and then putting them away. And we're talking about Camp FEMA. We're talking about the dragon that is rearing its ugly head on many fronts. This is one. This man is a Mason. Okay. He works with the Kabbalists from that one nation that if you criticize it, your video gets ripped off. 
of unbelievers who hate Jesus and they have their own Messiah that's coming. They're getting ready for the implementation of the laws to be put in place to um, for the people who will be here at that time who run to Jesus. They're getting ready to put together the laws and the FEMA camps and things like that for those people that they deem enemies of the state, mentally ill, uh, so on and so forth. And, and, you know, it will extend out to people who do not join with the one world religion. That's where these things are going. Uh, this is a really good video to check out. I'll put a link in the description. I may even end up doing a video looking at some of the things that he says. I haven't decided yet, but this is happening here in the month of Av, which really concerns me because uh, what I know about the lead up of a wool, these, these 30 days that walk you towards Tishri 1, that walk you towards the coming of the Messiah. And if he is coming this year, it's going to especially uh, become pertinent to you. Things are shaping up in a way this year that we've never seen before. In 2017, we saw verses 1 and 2 of Revelation 12 fulfilled. Uh, verses 3 and 4 with this dragon and this, this AI kingdom are occurring right now. And verse 5 is the rapture. So if there were ever a time to be paying attention and looking into Israel's biblical month of Elul, 30 days forward to Tishri 1, which I said was a feast of trumpets, which I said is September 30th, now would be the time to be paying attention. And then there's 10 more days after that to Yom Kippur. And much more can be said about that, but I, I don't want to confuse you. I want to, I want to keep it nice and simple right now. The month of Elul is known as uh, I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine because they take these letters and they make like a, I think it's called an acronym. And it's about, it's about prepping the bride because the king is in the field. It is a season of repentance. Okay. Teshuva, wake up, repent, come to the Lord, the lion. This all has to do with the coming of the lion. Okay. The season of Teshuva. So it's actually called the season of Teshuva. Now look, it's a whole month of Elul, which is a 30-day period of time set aside for preparation, personal examination, and repentance for the coming high holy days. It means get saved by the blood of Jesus or else. In traditional whatever, every morning during the 30 days of the month of Elul, the, tr the shofar, the ram's horn, is blown to warn the, uh, the, to warn the God of Israel's people, all people, to return or repent. It's same thing. In, tr in the synagogue, the shofar is blown every morning service except for the last day of Elul. Okay? After the shofar is, is blown, then Psalm 27 is read. That is a really important psalm of rescue. And this is really well said. The message from Elul 1 to Rosh Hashanah, so we're talking September 1st, to September 30th, 2019, is clear. Repent before Rosh Hashanah. Don't wait until after Rosh Hashanah, or you will find yourself in the days of awe. And the days of awe is, that, that's a whole nother discussion in and of itself, but to put it simple, to get it across the point to you, that stands for the seven-year tribulation. And we'll do videos talking about that too. Timing is of the essence. Interesting. It says here, the sixth month is the month of mercy. It has a stone that goes with it called Jasper, which is in the Bible. Uh, and the, the breastplate of the high priest, I think it had Jasper in it. The tribe that is represented, there's 12 tribes, there's 12 constellations. Uh, heaven will have 12 uh, names of these gentlemen. God appointed mercy from the hand of God, the month that the king is in the field. The month to fix what's broken, the month to find the place of the company of the Lord, the mother month, the month of nurturing, constellation, Virgo the Virgin, I am my beloved's, my beloved's is mine. It's brought to you by the letter Yud. <laughs> and this is the preparation month. This So September 1st to September, it would actually be 29th, and that would be the eve of Rosh Hashanah, and then September 30th would be day one of Rosh Hashanah. This is the period of time that people need to get in 
the ark by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus.